I'm starting work on the shutter for my Futura Futura P and uh, this is a focus mount on this side of the shutter and the shutter is mounted behind the front plate of the camera which is quite unusual so I'm looking at but effectively the shutter's in back to front from what we're normally used to seeing. So I'm looking to see how the shutter is fixed to the front plate. And I see that the inner focus helical here is got a couple of notches in it. And that looks like that screws to the outside of the shutter case. The, the thread at the rear, what would be the rear of the shutter case in a normal shutter. This is all quite um, sticky with dried grease and there's a fair bit of sand or grit in here too for good measure. So to get at those two points here and here to engage at all, really I need to unscrew my focus mount altogether, this out of focus uh, mount here and I can see that that's fixed to the outer helical with a series of small screws around the outside so I will see if they will come off I might make an alignment mark there so I know where it came from and I will do that Here, I think, where that screw is there. I'll make a little alignment mark there, a little scratch. So I know that's where the head of that screw comes to. I'll also be able to pick... I'll be adjusting the focus anyway by shifting this. But it's handy to know where it came to. Everything about this Futura is a little bit odd to work on. Everything is um, designed and assembled in an odd fashion when you're used to working on cameras. Uh, it ignores all the conventions really. I mean, the shutter being flipped so that the outside to the inside would be a typical example of ignoring conventions. That's all right. Right, so that's my outer helical. I'm just going to screw that down, see if that's level, and then mark that relative to the inner helical. I can see it doesn't screw all the way down. Is that flat now? Yeah, it's pretty flat. I'm just going to run a scribe line across this. Put two on that side, one on that side, so that I know that when that's screwed down as far as it would go and is virtually flat with the end of that inner helical, that that's the correct way for it to be. Now this exposes the slots here, and I think I can probably engage that with a useful tool. And what I'm thinking is to put my stainless roll across those and use that as a spanner to unscrew it. Almost certainly, I put, need to put a bit of solvent around the edge there because given the amount of black paint, I wouldn't be at all surprised if that hasn't been sealed on with a bit of paint. I don't think I showed you how sticky this shutter is, did I? If you cock it, press the shutter release, now virtually nothing happens. Or you might see the shutter blades just starting to ease their way open. It's incredibly sticky. Right, let's put a squirt of this down around the outside of that thread there and this is some CRC heavy duty ElectroClean. I want to prop this up on a piece of wood I think so I've got that sitting level when I try and undo that. Everybody needs a bench block. There we go. 
I put my ruler across there that is not showing any sign of turning okay that's stuck a bit firmer than I expected I'm going to put some acetone around the edge of that thread there and what I'll do is I'll take this down to my workshop and I'll unscrew this by setting a steel rule, not this one, a heavier one, into a vise so that only a very brief little edge of it is sticking up. I'll lower this so it's notches up on that and then twist the whole thing which should break that thread free. Sounds easy and it usually works. Well that worked exactly as I expected it to. So now I can remove that uh, inner helical which on any normal camera is in the position the retaining ring would be. Pop that to one side. The shutter should lift off that plate. I've got a flash contact here. and an earth contact for the flash there I'll unsolder them at this point I think pull the wires through and I might unsolder them from the other end once I've got the shutter off. Pull that wire through the front plate. Let's see if the shutter will come adrift. Bit reluctant. What's going on here? Oh, I've got a spring holding me back here somewhere. Be this one. I'll disconnect that. Not be easier said than done. That's it. Now will it come off? It's still hanging on there. It's not screwed on, is it? No, definitely not screwed on. No, it's just stuck. All right. Lift that plate off the back carefully, unhooking it from there. That's okay. That's our flash contact poking through there. It sticks out at a funny angle because it goes through the front to chrome trim at a funny angle. It's not bent. Here's my flash wires. Now I've got to take note of this. This is the where's the cocking action? That's here. What's this piece do? Don't know. Let's see if this ring will lift off. Well, it's hooked right into the front plate there. Probably reluctant to lift off then. Can I lift it over this way? 
Yes, I can. So there's that ring. The second ring here, that looks like... Is that the cocking action? It's off timer perhaps. Anyway, that's off. You can see how greasy this is. This is a real mess. This ring on the back. Will that lift out? Yes. We're down to the case here at this point. This, this would traditionally be the back of your shutter. In this camera, of course, it's the front of the shutter. Here. On this face. This is the shutter speed cam that comes off. Inside, that looks fairly traditional for a Prontour type shutter. Of course, this is a larger size than I'm normally used to dealing with. But the um, yeah, you gotta you gotta encourage it to work. It's really sticky. Interestingly, I can see a wadge of something green here. I suppose that was grease once upon a time. Well, that reminds me of Agfa, of course. And no one wants to know anything about Agfa's grease. Okay. So the shutter I now need to disassemble in the normal fashion. I'm not used to dealing with one this size. So its layout may be slightly different. Um, retard gear train, there's a screw here and a screw here. A larger screwdriver than that. The self timer, we've got a spring, that is a very strong spring, and that lifts out, so it doesn't even have a screw, just fits over that post. Okay, well that was easy. This is our flash contact over here. As this comes forward, it makes the flash contact. Oh, it's very convenient and this nice slow motion shutter so you can watch all the actions. Like a demonstration model. Of course, there's no diaphragm in here. The diaphragm is on the lens, not on the shutter itself. So we've only got the shutter blades to worry about. And I'm looking to see what I need to remove before I take the plate, the mechanism plate, out of the case. Well, typically I would unhook that spring, which is the spring that holds everything under tension. That is a bit reluctant to come off there. I'll have a go at that once the case is off. This lever here, which is flopping all around the place. That, oh, I really don't know what's coming. That's another flash contact. Does this have X and M flash sync? Perhaps it does. Let's take that off the mechanism plate. Take the main flash contact off here. And 
and I would think that spring there, I'll see if I can hook that back into position. The way it's connected up around here, it doesn't lift off easily like it does on the smaller shutters. I think that I can split the case now, which is three screws at the back of the case, which pass through the back of the case and run into the mechanism plate. The shutter blades are trapped between the mechanism place in the case. This is all very greasy. Let's see if the shutter will split. It does. There we go. Here's the mechanism plate with the blades and of course there's nothing in the case at all because there's no diaphragm there to worry about. So I'll mark the position of these blades. That's obviously blade 5. This is blade 1 here so I'll put a little mark on there and then this is blade 2 and this is blade 3 most shutters it doesn't make much difference where you start and finish things occasionally it does that's 4 and this is 5 Let's see if we've got five blades or whether we've got six. These are really stuck together. And that just leaves the mechanism plate there. Now I will want to remove the blade actuating ring which is held in with these screws here and washers. So this spring that I unhooked earlier, I'm going to unhook that because otherwise I'll never get that. Oh, that was easy to get off once it was out of the case. So the shutter's in the cocked position, is it? Yep, yeah, I should be able to move that forward right. I'll remove these five screws and washers and I should be good to go. These screws and washers just retain the blade actuating ring so that it can't get away. And the screw heads act as the pivot point for the shutter blades. So they do not want to be distorted otherwise the blades won't swing round them easily. Okay, there's our blade actuating ring. That looks a little bit oily. There's certainly oil here on the brush on the mechanism plate. And all of these components I need to clean. I don't think I need to disassemble any of this the release levers and the B levers here. They seem to be moving freely enough even with that nasty looking green grease. So I'm just going to clean that lot in place with some naphtha, clean the mechanism plate, swab that carefully with some naphtha on a cotton bud and start reassembling things, cleaning as I go. Well I'll start reassembling the mechanism plate. So with that in the cocked position I've got to make sure that its arm here is pulled back so that I can get this tab up through it. It should drop in oh, it's one of those tasks you only need three hands for. Normal tasks in other words. Right. That's good. That's sitting in place. Now we've got our five washers and five screws. 
there's a few extra holes here just to confuse the issue but I'm looking to see where the holes are relative to the other positions so that I don't make a mess of that and that screwdriver has got some gunk on it I'll just clean that looks like glue or something on the tip and I don't want that Let's get that screwdriver clean. That's better. All right, and this screwdriver is magnetised. That's always a fun. Might have to get another one. Yes, I can see that's going to be trouble. Let me start with a different screwdriver. This one should do. These screws are all independent of course, they're not holding, they're not going through a ring with five holes in it. So I can put the screws in and do them up tight as I go. If it was a retaining ring with five holes in it that I was putting screws through, normally you would put the screws in all of them loosely and then you would tighten them up once they were all in place. But each of these is only going for a single washer and nothing else. Just checking to make sure these screws are all the same length and they appear to be. Sometimes you strike a situation where one of the screws is shorter than the others so that it clears things on the other side of the mechanism plate. That's not the case here and I'm having just as much fun with this screwdriver so I thought I'd pick one that wasn't magnetised but, but this one is too. One of these washers is cut off I don't think there's any intentional function in that. I think that's just clumsy manufacture of washers. We'll have the washer rotated so that the side of it is actually doing something. That's better. The last one. As I said before, these screw heads act as the pivots that the shutter blades revolve around. So it's important that the screw heads are not all buggered up, that they stay nice and round. Which means it's important 
to use good screwdrivers when you're taking them apart. And care when you're putting them back not to distort anything right well that's our blade actuating ring back in place why is that not dropping into that slot I've done something wrong Something doesn't want to move. Yep, this washer here, the washers, the hole in them is oversized, and I can see that this washer is hitting against that pin. I shift it over there, and we're all good to go. That's good. That's working as it should. So if I bring this into the cocked position, disconnect that arm, slide this forward. This puts my blade actuating ring in the blades open position. And now I can put my shutter blades back in place. Fortunately, I'd marked my case where they were all to go. So I happen to know that blade number one goes here and the blades are going in in the blades open position blade number two goes here I could just as easily have made a sketch of where the blades were to go to start but uh, if you've got a sharp screwdriver in your hand it's just as easy to make a mark you cannot uh, mistake. Blade four. And this is blade five. Now I've got to get my shutter case, which I've cleaned, over the top of this and screwed into place. So, I'm looking at the spacing of my mounting holes, and they're not symmetrical, so it only goes on in one position. My flash contact is going to be over here somewhere, yeah, about there. So I'm fairly sure it goes on there. Oh, is that going to disturb my shutter blades? That flaming does. Okay. Can I move them back towards the closed position a little bit? Yeah, just a little bit. Just enough to get this case on. It was catching up on those flash contacts. That's it. Now I'm holding this together with finger and thumb. Pop that down in my all-purpose block of wood so it won't run away. I've got my three case screws here. And of course, they're as greasy as because everything on this shutter was greasy. So I'm just going to wipe them with some naphtha to clean them up a bit. Now it's fairly unusual for a camera with a shutter that's 
open to the atmosphere as this one is because the lens fits on the front of the shutter, front of the camera and the shutter is open to the atmosphere at the back. It's fairly unusual for a camera laid out like that for the blades to oil up to this extent. Normally when they're oily it's in a shutter where the, there is a lens component on the front and a lens component on the rear. Right, that looks good. Now I'll see if I can get that spring back in, which I was having trouble taking out to start off with. I'll see if I can push that back over its post, the detent. Oh yeah, it's got quite a bit of tension on that. Yeah, no wonder I was having a little bit of trouble. Right, let's get this down on tabletop and I can fight with this at my leisure. Here you can see this is going to be trouble. And it's going to go for the hills if, I'm, if I slip and let the bloody thing go. It's going to take off never to be seen again. Yes. Oh, that's just about it. That is it. It's in position. Right, so now I cock the shutter. It fires nicely. And the, you don't, not seeing a bee action there because the action is so quick the bee lever didn't have a chance to drop in. And the B action is such that that slides down there. So that certainly needs a touch of lubricant on that point in order to make that work. I'm just looking at the state of one of these levers trying to decide whether it's actually got a little bend in it. I mean the camera had probably suffered a little bit of abuse. Yeah, that's quite good. So... A touch of lubricant and a couple of points here, a touch of molybdenum paste and I'm sure that'll work fine. I'll just get some. 